Yeah, once I left uh, Alaska and got sent to uh, to Corcoran, uh, yeah, I landed right there in the shoe. Uh, I was in 4A3 left. This was back in um, 98. Uh, back then, we still had uh, group yards, meaning, you know, uh, everybody goes to the same yard opposed to nowadays where the yards are just cages, you know. Uh, everything's segregated nowadays. But back then, we had group yards. And on our first yard, me and my Sally, uh, you know, we went out to the yard, and there was somebody on the yard that uh, they had to get checked. So uh, they had jammed up my Sally and, and, and asked him if, uh, if he would do that, right? And, uh, you know, obviously he said yes because, you know, that's what we do. You know, uh, um, but the problem was is that with everybody else there, nobody else raised their hand. You know what I mean? And and nobody really has done nothing right there. Um, well, I shouldn't say nobody, but there were still people, you know, who, who still had to put their bid in. Anyways, uh, long story short, uh, when they jammed my Sally, because he was my Sally, I felt obligated to raise my hand. So, you know, uh, I did that. And uh, on our first yard, <clears throat> oh, they, they asked my Sally, right? And, uh, you know, he, you know, when, when, when you're asked to go on a hale, you know, uh, um, whether it be a, a, an assault or a speaking or whatever, I mean, if you're, if you're truly down for the cause, uh, or Sureño, then you, you don't refuse. You know what I mean? You do what you gotta do and, and you, uh, you earn your points. You know what I mean? Um, you earn that, that, uh, that right to, uh, represent hopes. So when they asked my family, nobody else was wanted to go. So I volunteered to go. I volunteered to go because he was my Sally. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when we were, uh, we, we, when we went out to yard, old boy was out there, the victim. And, uh, uh, this was all formulated on the yard. And like an hour later, uh, you know, uh, uh, it happened, the assault. Uh, when we went out, you know, we went out there, we all worked out in the shoe yards as a whole. We always, uh, we have group workouts. You know what I mean? Uh, um, uh, whatever we're doing, burpees, uh, uh, push-ups, whatever. It, it was always a group, you know? So we went ahead and knocked out the workout. And then after the workout, uh, uh, yeah, it was time to go. It was time to get busy on this fool. So me, I don't like waiting. I just like to take care of business and, uh, you know, do what we're supposed to do. So he was, he was lingering by the door. I think he felt like uh, something was going to come, right? So, uh, so he hung out by the by the by the yard door. Well, that's right underneath the gunner, the yard door. And back then, when we do an assault, we couldn't get down until they shot the block gun three times. You understand what I'm saying? After the third time, that's when they break out the, the BD-14, and, and that's when we get down. So he was hanging out underneath the uh, the, the guard tower. I think he had a feeling something was going to happen. And uh, me, I walked up to him and, and took off on him. I, uh, I, uh, I took flight on him, and, uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was on him, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, punching him uh, uh um there was no weapons we didn't we didn't use weapons on that one um but uh yeah it was just a physical assault anyways um we're assaulting this fool and uh you know he he, he can't he's tucking and, 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 and rolling and uh i'm just letting loose on him my Sally, he gets shot with the block gun because the gunner starts shooting the block gun 
And keep in mind, we're only like 10 feet away from where he's shooting. So my celly gets hit, he falls, um, and I'm still going on this fool. I'm still going. Finally, you know, I don't know, probably after uh, uh, a good minute, minute and a half, after they shot like three, four, or five times, uh, it was a wrap. You know, I got down. Uh, he was he was leaking all over the place. He was bleeding. Um, uh, face. Uh, uh, he was laid out on the floor, you know. Uh, but uh, after that assault, <clears throat> yeah, we went back to the pad back to the cells, and, and it just so happened he was my neighbor. So, uh, it was explained to him why, why that happened, and uh, um, ultimately, he was still able to come out to the yard. He was good. He just got, he just got checked. You know what I mean? He said well, something why, about why, the, uh, I'm sorry, but he said, that, why, why, why did y'all check him for? Like, what, what was the whole purpose? Yeah. Yeah, at that time, he, uh, he was from, uh, he was from this barrio in, in L.A. called Baravia, right? And uh, they were having uh, issues with the sur. And he he, uh, he disrespected the sur. And so because of that, it came down from uh, from uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the carnales to uh, jump on this fool. So, you know, that's what we did. You know what I mean? And... I'm only in, this is, uh, I just met, left reception and landed in Corcoran Shoe. I still hadn't even been to the main line yet. You know what I mean? So, and I'm already putting in work on my first yard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so uh, uh, yeah, you know, we went back to the pad, and, and they ended up leaving me on walk alone for like seven months. Walk alone is where... You just go to yard by yourself, you know. You're not with the with the the rest of the the fellas. You know what I mean? Um, it's more or less like a punishment. You know what I mean? You have 60 seconds well, remaining. Yeah. After after we uh we we handled our business with uh with that dude from Maravilla, um, uh, they pretty much left me on walk alone for the rest of my time right there in Corcoran Shoe. Um, I was there for about 10 more months and then got released. When I got released to uh, to high desert, uh, they, I landed on Sea Yard. And back then, in 90, 99, it was rocking, man. It, there was, uh, any time the doors cracked, it was on and cracking. Whether it be uh, uh, the Sureños, uh, the, the Guachos, or the Norteños, or the Blacks, or whatever. Um, but uh, with, with us, with the Sureños, we were going at it with the Whites. And... Uh, um, I remember one particular time, um, they, uh, uh, I had gotten there and, uh, they had just got slammed down for a riot. Well, I was there for a couple months and then they started letting us off slowly but surely. Um, we, uh, they were letting us out at like five at a time, so on and so forth. Well, in the beginning, everybody was, uh, you know, everybody knew what time it was. Once uh, 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 once everybody got out there, it was it pretty much it was gonna rock. You could feel the tension, you could feel the heat, um, you know, it, you could feel it, the quietness, and the quietness spoke volumes. Uh, but they were letting out at like five at a time, five five watts, five uh, south siders. So uh, before you knew it. You know, there's a there's a you know there's a good amount out there. There's like 20 20 whites, 20 south siders, maybe a few more, less, around that number. But um, once it got comfortable enough to where uh, where uh, there was enough whites and enough south siders, um, like I said, you could feel that tension, man. You could <laughs> you could feel it big time. Um, for us, uh, you know, we went out there strapped, you know, uh, the only way to go out there was, uh, uh, by, you know, pretty much, uh, hooping, hooping your, your weapons, you know what I mean? And, uh, taking them out that way because on the way out, you know, you're strip searched and, uh, um, you know, the whole nine yards, you know, and the only way to take any type of weapon stock or weapons was, uh, was by keistering them. And, uh, I remember one time I had two pieces keistered.
And once we got out there, um, you know, you you uh, you push them out. You know, once everything was uh, set. How how how? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But how do you push yeah. them? Like you know, like how do you do all that? How do you uh, push them out and get into action? Well, when when you keep your rank, I mean, uh, it, as disgusting as it may sound, but it's a reality. You know, you you you, you cop a squat, man, and, and you uh, you push it straight up. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, until it's in there and secure. You know what I mean? Um, when you when you pull it out, pretty much you're 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 pushing it out like if you're using the using the restroom. You know what I'm saying? And it comes out, and uh, you know, from there you you unwrap, uh, you unwrap the piece because, of course, you have it wrapped up. You know, you can you can't you can't shove it up there uh, uh, non wrapped. You know, you got to wrap it up and, 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 and lube it up in order to get it in. Once you get it in, and you know, you're you're cool, and you're on the yard. There is no restroom. You know what I mean? So, you know, it is to what it is. Hopefully, nothing comes out with it. You know what I mean? In my case, nothing did. You know what I mean? Because, uh, I mean, I emptied out before I even did that. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, you're sitting at the tables and you're taking these pieces out of me and it's common in prison. That's how you maneuver and that's how you transport drugs, weapons, whatever. You know what I mean? And in this case, before this, this little riot jumped off, yeah, that's what we had to do. You know, we that's the only way of taking out these, these pieces. Knives and, and homemade manufactured weapons. You know, um but uh, uh once once we were all out there and there was a significant amount of no, uh, numbers, yeah, we everybody started taking their piece out. And at the same time you could feel the tension, man. You could feel you, you knew something was gonna happen. The CEOs knew something was gonna happen. The CEOs were along the walls, strapped up with their mini 14s, um, their their block guns, just waiting because they knew too. Uh, uh, before you know it, you know we're all set to go, weapons in hand, um, whether it be metal stock or, or plastic stock or whatever, whatever was used. You know, most of the time metal, but uh, with the metal in hand. Um, Pretty much, uh, uh, you know, once they would see us rushing or once we would see them rushing, then the other party would rush at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, before you know it, we rushed them. We rushed the whites, okay, because they were they were uh, green-lighted from a previous time. Um, honestly, I forget what transpired for this even to happen because I was still in Corcoran's shoe when it was cracking. You know what I mean? When I got there, it was still happening. When we came out the yard, it was still happening. You understand what I'm saying? So on this particular time, on this yard, uh, we rushed them, right? And they knew it was coming. So pretty much they were prepared, but not as prepared as us. You know what I mean? Because they weren't so sure. They weren't a hundred percent sure. You you understand? So when we were out there, I don't know, probably about ten minutes in the yard, fifteen minutes in the yard, uh, uh, we were situated in in our in our areas because uh, on every yard, you know, there's there's designated areas for the south, for the whites, for the blacks, for the northerners, and we were at our area and the whites were at theirs, which was only about uh about probably about thirty yards away, right? So uh, we were at the bars at our tables, and uh, um, they were at their tables and pretty much stuck right there. Anyways, uh, uh, we're ready to go, so so the, the camaradas from the bar start wa walking towards us to where we're at at the tables. Once they get close enough in proximity, we get up and we start rushing the galas, the galas at the table, right? Once we get to that point, Oh, yeah, it's a free-for-all, man. Whatever you can get your hands on, that's what you're hitting. But uh, um, not everybody had pieces, but uh, the ones who did were stabbing. Uh, I was one of the ones who was stabbing, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, um, the others, you know, were, were fist-fighting and whatnot. But, yeah, um, it lasted probably... Um, 
a good couple minutes. You know what I mean? And and like even like a hundred and twenty seconds is a long ass time for for a little riot to jump on. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, the the all the seals along the walls, they were blasting with uh, with their block guns. And after so many shots with the block gun, if we don't get down, then they start using the Mini 14, right? And at that time, they did use the Mini 14, but they didn't hit nobody at that time. So nobody was seriously injured or, or anything like that. But uh, there have been times in, in previous riots where, you know, inmates were shot and killed. You know what I mean? Shot in the head, shot in the chest shot in the leg, uh, uh, I, I know one person, uh, I knew somebody back in the day who got shot in the leg and lost half of his leg, they had to amputate it from a mini 14, so, yeah, it, it's real, you know what I mean, and at this time, uh, uh, and, and during our riot, it, uh, uh, it, it came to, it came to the mini 14, fortunately, like I said, nobody got shot. Because look, man, at the end of the day, it's just it's it's just business. You know what I mean? Um, very very seldomly is it personal. Because if it's personal, then you know you can more or less work it on a, on a communicated level. But business, yeah, it, it, sometimes it it leads to it leads to that to, to riots, depending on who who complies and who doesn't. But in this case, uh, yeah, it was just all business. So fortunately, nobody got killed. Um, but yeah, there were some serious, serious stab wounds, and uh, quite a few people had to go to the hospital that day. You know what I mean? Um, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, I was full of blood. I had blood all over, not from me, but from the person I was stabbing. And uh, uh, multiple others had, had stab wounds, you know. Uh, a couple of our uh, camaradas, you know, they got stabbed, and, and uh, um, the majority of them got stabbed, you know what I mean? But, uh, um, yeah, it, it was a dirty day that day, you know what I mean? Um, finally got the yard put down. Everybody was proned out. Um, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Everybody was proned out, and, and they got these, uh, you know, the zip ties? Yeah. They zip tied, yeah, they zip tied everybody and, and escorted everybody back to the cells. All the wounded were taken to, uh, to the uh, prison hospital, to CTC prison hospital, and um, pretty much that was a wrap because uh, after that we were slammed down for a few months again. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, on the next time, following time after that riot, uh, when we all came out, you know, it was uh, it was a different tune. Uh, we had we had squashed everything out with the whites, and it was all good. You know what I mean? But that particular uh, riot, yeah, it was uh, it was happening, man. You know what I mean? It was uh, it was uh, uh, it was deep. It was intense, and uh, there was a lot of bloodshed. You know what that I mean? Right, man. Now, um, how do you get word that you guys are going to war? How do you prepare yourself for this? Do you do you how do, you know who tells you that something's about to happen? Who tells us? Well, that that comes from uh, you know from from. Uh, from the fellas at that time, uh, uh, from the from the uh, carnales, you know, and uh, pretty much uh, for preparation for that, preparation is all mental. You know what I mean? Uh, you you uh, you know you you sit there, you you get in the zone, and and you uh, you you foresee what you're gonna do. Like for me, I would I would run over every scenario in my head that could possibly happen in any situation that I'm in while on that yard battling against somebody else. You know what I mean? Uh, in other words, if, 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 if I picture in my head me going at it with, with, with one person, and then I also imagine somebody coming from the side and me reacting to that how am how am i going to react to that uh how am i going to maneuver you know what i mean um that all runs through my head and that's how i prepare um but at the end of the day preparation is acceptance you accept 
what's going to happen, and you just deal with it. You don't, you don't doubt it. You don't um, uh, shy away from it. You know, you just go with it. You know, and uh, uh, in my case, uh, uh, at that at that particular time, yeah, I was all for it. You know what I mean? Uh, I was. Uh, I, I I wanted to do it. I wanted to get involved. I wanted to get my hands dirty. You know what I mean? I wanted the violence um, because that's what my life was about. You know what I mean? This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And, and for anything less, then, then you had no re no business representing, you know, uh, uh, the sur or whatever it is you stood for. You understand what I'm saying? There's no half-stepping. Yes, you know yes. I mean? is, is, is there more people like you who have the same mentality, uh, the same mentality as you, or can you see the difference between other people, like, I guess, of being a little softer than you are? Can you tell the difference, as inmates? Oh, yeah, I can tell the difference, right? But at that time, the majority were had the same mindset, you know what I mean? Because that was the, that was the program. That was the program back then, you know? Um, uh, so, yeah, the majority um, had that same mindset. You know, we're, we're going to go to battle. We're going to go to war. And that's that, you know? Uh, um, you know, let, let's just hope for the best, but always expect the worst, you know? Um, but then, you know, you had the few that, that you could tell were kind of shady, you know, uh, just by their timid in this or their their uh, um, the 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 nerves um, on how they react, you know um, the questions you know that would be asked, you know um, like what like what? Give an example. Like uh, like, are you sure this is a good idea to do this? Is you know what I mean? When when someone question questions what's already been decided, then there's hesitation there. You understand what I'm saying? When somebody questions what's already been decided, then there's hesitation. And once there's hesitation, there's doubt. And once there's doubt, then you can't fully, you, you can't fully comprehend on, uh, on what's going on. You know what I mean? Um, you, you, you can't fully uh, uh, grasp uh, what you're about to do, and and because of that, it leaves that person shady. You know, it, it it you know I don't want somebody like that around me, especially in the heat of battle. I want somebody who's sure, who's uh, who's on the same page as me, and who's ready to rock and roll. You know what I mean? I don't want somebody who's who's questioning a decision that's already been made. You understand what I'm saying? After that riot jumped off, uh, um, they slammed everybody down in, in inside the cells. Uh, they took a few people to the hole, but the majority they left in the cells and uh, left us on lockdown for, shoot, had to be at least uh, 60 days, 60-day 60 lockdown, if not a little longer. Um, so, yeah, during that lockdown, that's exactly what it was, was a lockdown. They came and uh, the CEOs... Uh, you know, uh, uh, broke down the whole yard, searched it, searched the yards, looked for weapons, searched all the cells, um, looking for weapons and whatnot. And uh, um, while they never really found nothing, pretty much everything was used during that riot. Um, you know, they still went through the through the process. But once uh, once uh, the 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 search was over, they uh, we uh, they picked a specific amount of Southsiders and as well as uh, uh, Gauchos, white boys, and uh, to more or less walk and talk throughout the yard and uh, let everybody know that it was a dead issue. You know what I mean? Um, for us, it was uh, it was the Vato who had the yard, another camarada, and and myself. We were uh, we walked and uh, strolled the yard and went through all the blocks. Um, 
talk to all the, the camaradas and uh, more or less let them know, like, look, man, what's, you know, the whatever differences we had, it's over. Um, you know, uh, once they lift this lockdown, uh, we'll come out and program. And, the, you know, the whites did the same thing as they walked and talked with us. There was three of them and three of us. Um, so, yeah, we did that for about a, a week, maybe a week and some change. And finally, we came off a of lockdown. You know, once we got off a of lockdown, everything was cool, you know. But uh, I remember, too, right when we got off a of lockdown, you know, uh, um, there was still uh, there was still animosity amongst our own race. Um, most of the time, it was drug debts, people who owe money over drugs. And I remember when we got off lockdown, our first yard, there was this cat that was over there by the drinking fountain, and he owed a, a significant amount of money to 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 uh, an individual who, you know, sold dope. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, so he he wasn't able to pay in time, and a lot of that money uh, uh, was uh, wasn't accounted for. So what happened to him was <laughs> our first yard off a of lockdown. Um, he got he got booked. Uh, there were there was two two other camaradas that were strapped up, and uh, uh, it was their time to put in some work, as they were both youngsters. So they walked over there and and How young? hit this dude. Uh, probably How about young? uh, uh, late, mid to late twenties, mid to late twenties. But uh, um, they nice. walked over and they, yeah, they they walked over and stabbed this dude in the neck and. In, 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 the, in the chest and the stomach and, and booked the hell out of him. And uh, he was leaking. He was leaking pretty good. He was bleeding out bad. and uh, But that was all over a drug debt. So when we came off the lockdown, yeah, there was some, there was some uh, things that needed to be handled amongst our, our, uh, our Ranfla. And uh, that first day was, uh, was, was exactly that, you know, uh, um, Old boy got got stabbed up. Uh, he owed money, and uh, I mean, after that, it was more a chequeada because he he uh, he still had the opportunity to to pay, you know. But um, but uh, after a specific amount of time, that's what happens, man. You know, you get uh, you get taken off the yard, you know, if you owe, owe that much money. I'm not sure how much it was, but I, it's pretty probably close to about a thousand dollars, you know. But um, uh, yeah, and after that, we went on lockdown again for a few days, and then uh, we came back off, and yeah, we started programming, man. You know how do you mean? choose? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but how do you choose? Like, you know, how do you choose who who's up next to to go on the mission? Like you said, for instance, you you chose those two young those two young crews got chosen to go um, yeah. check that dude, but how does that come about? Well, usually. Like, if you're fresh in, right, you're young, you're fresh in, you're first time in the joint, you're going to be asked to, to go on missions. You're going to be asked to go uh, take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. And that's, in the beginning of our interview, that's what I meant by putting in work. You know, um, you're, you're, you're picked, your time comes, and everybody has to go through it. Or at least back then, everybody did. And that's how you earn your stripes. That's how you earn your bones. You know what I mean? That's how you earn your re reputation, your respect. And uh, um, um, for for youngsters like that, it's just uh, it's like a you know it's like an initiation, so to speak. You know, uh, uh, if you handle it and you handle it well, then pretty much uh, all is well with that person. You know what I mean? But if you if you refuse to go on a mission or you deny to go on a mission, yeah, you're going to be looked at as a, as a pariah. You know what I mean? Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, what good are you if you're not here to represent the cause? You know what I'm saying? And once that happens, usually back then, if somebody denied or refused a mission, then they were going to get taken off the yard themselves. Because at the end of the day... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. At the end of the day, you don't want dudes that aren't down for for the same belief as what the majority believe in um, 
they were they were gone. They were getting taken off the yard. You know what I mean? So, you know, uh, uh, more or less, uh, the yards were just nothing but riders, uh, 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 sureños, uh, uh, dudes that are that were on the way of earning their their stripes or earn their stripes or you know um, or in the process of earning their stripes. You know what I mean? So. Has it- Go ahead. Has there ever has there ever sorry to interrupt you, but has there ever been a has there ever been an instance where there was a youngster, maybe twenty five, twenty seven, but he had just gone in there for a minor charge, you know, maybe two or three years, nothing major, and then having him been chosen to go put in work and basically converting that two, three year charge into maybe like a life sentence or something yeah. like a or a first degree murder charge or something crazy like that? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, but norm normally, right? If you if you if you come in and you're short to to going home, then you know the the consideration will be there for them not even to ask ask that person just because they are going home. You know what I mean? But if if you get somebody who comes in and whether they're short or not to the house, if they walk around like with their chest out and and think they're uh, they're all that. Uh, in 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 flaunting the fact that okay I'm here I'm ready to do this you know what I mean then for sure they're going to be asked to do something you know what I mean because if you're going to be walking around like that with your chest out and flaunting everything then uh, then you know you're going to be called on it and we're going to see really where your heart's at you know what I mean and if 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 you if you do deny it after walking around like that. Then more than likely, yeah, you're going to be treated like a pariah, or you're going to be taken off the yard. But for okay. those who come in, huh? No, go ahead, go ahead. But for those who come in like all humble and you know, uh, um, you know, with uh, uh, that courtesy of of just a humble person, um, you know, more than likely they're going to be left alone. But they may still be asked and. Depending on how they conduct themselves throughout that little process, it could determine whether or not they're going to stay on the yard or not, if they refuse or not. You understand what I'm saying? So it's just all discretional at the end of the day, man. You know what I mean? Does, does, a, certain, does a certain instance in your mind stick out of a, of a young homie who, 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 in that certain scenario, like we said, that two or three years turned it into a life sentence? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've known a couple people. I've known somebody when I got out of uh actually when I was in Ed Seg in the hole in Wasco in nineteen ninety eight, um, there was a camarada who had gotten out of prison at a Pelican Bay, he was in a shoe, he was an older older camarada. And he was on the bus heading back down to where he was from, right? He was from Bakersfield. Anyways, on the bus, he fell asleep, and uh, and and he fell asleep, and somebody woke him up, and he ended up uh, uh, jumping up out of his sleep, um, and taking off on this guy, and 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 picking up more time just before he even made it home, right? That's that's for that particular incident. What you're asking for for like somebody that comes in. Um, short to the house, uh, short termer ends up picking a life top. Yeah, I've seen that as well. And those those are the cats that are like wholeheartedly dedicated to the cause and uh, um, for what they believe in. You know what Tell I mean? Tell us an and, instance. And and and, and uh, let me see. Uh, there was one time where where somebody was asked to. You have sixty seconds remaining.